I always think that dual use part of everything is super interesting. Look at lasers. Lasers are arguably perhaps the most important technological defense born, um, you know, system of the 20th century. Laser printers, laser surgery, laser eyes. And then you have laser weapons at the Pentagon, so classified I can't even get anywhere near that. Really? They're, they're called direct ener directed energy weapons. And what, how, how much do you know about them? While our fellow defense contractors have invested decades and billions of dollars in the development of advanced laser weapon systems, adversaries around the globe are not sitting still either. Whether we like it or not, we are in the midst of a global arms race. Now, imagine a laser powerful enough to annihilate the entire planet. Fortunately, such a system does not exist yet. How long have we got before someone builds one? Join us as we delve into the past, present and future of race for the ultimate laser technology. Now, I get it, some of you might be thinking, lasers? Aren't those the things in sci-fi movies and cat toys? Well, yes, but there's more to do. Let's go for a quick dive into how they work without needing a PhD in quantum mechanics. Imagine a party where the guests are photons, those tiny particles of light. The laser is the most exclusive club for these photon party goers with a strict energy-only dress code. This club, officially known as Light Amplification with Stimulated Emission of Radiation, or LASER for short, operates on a principle that even Einstein found cool – Stimulated Emission. The story of the laser starts with a genius named Max Planck, who told us that energy is a bit picky and likes to come in specific chunks – quants. He wasn't exactly thinking of lasers at the time, but we might not have them today without his brainwaves. And then there's Einstein, who, aside from his job of reshaping our understanding of the universe, laid down the theoretical bits for the laser's party trick, getting atoms excited to the point they all emit light in unison. Fast forward to 1960, and Theodore Maiman is the DJ who finally gets the party started, creating the first operational laser. Imagine that! A beam of light so pure and focused, it's like the universe's most precise pencil. So, how does this exclusive photon club work? It all boils down to three main elements. A gain medium, the dance floor, an energy source, the DJ, and a pair of mirrors, the club's walls. The energy source get the atoms in the gain medium so excited they start emitting photons. These photons bounce back and forth between the mirrors, picking up more friends along the way, until BOOM! They burst out in a coherent beam of light through one slightly less shy mirror. Cold War Nuclear weapon stockpiles are huge on both sides of the Atlantic. Enter Project Excalibur, a bold endeavor from 1978 to 1988 by US military, conceived by theoretical physicist Edward Teller, who is colloquially known as the father of the H-bomb. Their mission? To channel a controlled nuclear detonation in low Earth orbit into a battery of expandable X-ray lasers capable of knocking ballistic missiles in mid-flight before the warheads get separated, all under Ronald Reagan's Star Wars missile defense program. X-ray laser is not so different in principle from its rabbi cousin but it packs a punch with energy levels that are off the charts. This powerhouse operates in a fast lane, so fast that it doesn't even stop for mirrors. It blasts its X-ray beam in a single pass through the gain medium. Yet, as every tale of ambition faces its trials, the original Project Excalibur faced hurdles. Initial testing in the 1970s had been unsuccessful, with experiments stumbling and skeptics publishing reports claiming it could be easily outmaneuvered. Nevertheless, Many experiments later, on November 14, 1980, scientists detonated a 2 kiloton nuclear device in a kilometer deep underground shaft at the Nevada test site. Excalibur scored a success. X-ray laser showed possible practical use. As a response to the skeptics, rather than backing down, Teleron would double down, unveiling Excalibur Plus concept, boasting firepower a thousand times mightier than its predecessor. And just when you thought it couldn't get more intense, Along came Super Excalibur, another thousand times mightier, with the laser beam trillion times brighter than the bomb itself. Project picked 
in 87 at 349 million of budget and then began to rapidly reverse and was cancelled in 1988. You would think, what a waste of money, but the project was a geopolitical success because Soviets were spending millions of their own money to develop a symmetric response, their laser weapon system, which never made it into a stable orbit. The US successfully bluffed its opponent into developing and testing a symmetric response to a threat that never came to reality. This and other economic factors in the end led to the demise of USSR. Now, back to present times. This is Helios, high energy laser with integrated optical dazzler and surveillance. Helios is built as a weapon that can burn small speedboats of the type Iran deploys in armed swarms and can torch drones out of the sky. Its attributes, deep magazine, low cost per engagement, speed of light delivery, precision targeting. Awarded to Lockheed Martin in January 2018, the Helios project has progressed steadily, achieving key milestones such as 60 kW of power during testing. Having such weapon system makes defending against drone swarms a walk in the park, because it costs around a cup of coffee to fire this system. Helios was delivered to the Navy in August 2022 and installed on Arlite Burke Flight 2A destroyer USS Rebel. But the horizon of laser technology stretches even further, with the San Antonio class amphibious transport dockship USS Portland, now armed with the laser weapon system demonstrator Mark II Mod Zero, a titan of lasers with 150 kW power output. This beast elevates the game, granting the power to neutralize more formidable threats such as low flying cruise missiles, aircraft, and artillery rockets. And just when you thought, but what about a more usual mission on land? Lockheed Martin brings the battle ashore with the most potent electric laser yet delivered to US Department of Defense. This 300 kW class Colossus, destined for US Army IFPC HEL system, marks a five-fold leap in power over Helios, reshaping the battlefield with its tactically relevant might so that the before-mentioned capabilities are available to the infantry. The US is not alone in the race for supremacy in directed energy weapons. A formidable rival from the East keeps pace, keenly aware that these systems are set to redefine military engagements in the 21st century. Humans will develop a laser weapon with enough power to destroy a planet. Question is when, and not if. Some may think, it's so much energy that it's impossible. Well, someone did the math on this. That someone is Neil deGrasse Tyson. Star Wars, The Force Awakens. And in there they have the like, the, the updated Death Star. Right. Okay. Remember the old Death Star? It has enough power to destroy a planet. And that's devastating. This one, it can suck energy out of a star so that the star no longer exists. It could take these energy beams and kill six planets at once. It's no longer just a one planet killer. Well, I did the math on this <laughs> and I tweeted and I, I said, first, okay, if you take all the energy from a star, you become a star, but let's not, maybe they've got a containment mechanism. I'll give it to them. It is the future after all. all. Right. So you do the calculation. And I forgot the number, but I, got, I calculated how much energy is stored in a star. That's enough energy to explode a thousand planets. Oh my gosh, they underrepresented the energy that it sucked out of the host star, out of the star. Creating such a system with the capability to wipe clean a planet from existence would require a laser weapon system with the power of one thousandth energy of the sun. That's a lot, but not impossible. For energy source, we may use a powerful nuclear fusion reactor. Imagine a more advanced version of the ITER reactor currently under construction. It's a huge, donut-shaped machine known as a tokamak. With ITER, 35 nations working together aim to achieve a controlled fusion with a surplus of energy by 2030, which will pave the way for the development and production of commercial reactors within a few decades. It's also possible to create a process to extract this energy from an already available fusion reactor, our sun. Expanding solar power harvesting and storage capabilities is needed. Creating an energy source 1000th as powerful as the sun hinges on major advancements in nuclear fusion and solar energy technologies. The exact timeline is uncertain due to complex scientific and technological challenges involved. Realistically, achieving such a monumental energy output would be possible in the latter half of 21st century, 
pursuing breakthroughs in energy generation, storage and global cooperation, which, looking at today's world, is not that likely. As for the laser itself, the most powerful at the moment is available at Extreme Light Infrastructure or LE Beam Lights. It's a 10 peta, that's 10 with 15 zeros after it watts laser. Very powerful. The caveat here is that it only lasts for a few femtoseconds, that is, one millionth of one billionth of a second on this power level, with one of the limiters being heat buildup. And just in time, Chinese military scientists at the National University of Defense Technology in Changsha, Hunan Province have unveiled a groundbreaking development in laser weapon technology, promising the limitless operation of high energy lasers without any pesky waste heat buildup. Imagine having the power to shoot laser beams continuously, indefinitely without any interruptions. Their innovative cooling system employs advanced structures and optimized gas flow to whisk away the heat generated inside the laser weapon. Not only does it reduce turbulence and vibration, but it also improves the cleanliness of mirrors, which is a big deal when it comes to high energy lasers. If we look back at the first Ruby laser and at the progress that was made in the past 60 years, there is no reason to rule out the possibility to achieve before mentioned laser weapon system power levels by the end of this century. As we stand at the precipice of potentially earth shattering developments in laser technology, we are reminded of our perennial challenge to balance our thirst for innovation with the wisdom to foresee and mitigate its consequences. We didn't blow the planet with nukes in the past 80 years, so there is hope. The journey of the laser from a tool of precision to a weapon of strategic significance underscores a narrative of boundless potential tempered by cautionary stewardship. As we venture into the unknown, armed with the power to shape worlds, the legacy of the laser serves as a beacon, illuminating the path between harnessing the forces of the universe and safeguarding the delicate balance of existence. Next time you see a laser in action, remember, it's not just a beam of light, it's a party of photons that's been over a century in the making, all thanks to some of the greatest minds of human history. And who knows? Maybe one day you'll be a part of the next big breakthrough that will take lasers to the next level. Until then, keep shining bright and let your curiosity lead the way.